to a brand new episode of the Wooly Thistle Shopcast. I believe this is episode 221. 222. 222. <laughs> That's amazing. And uh, I'm your host, Corrine. I own the, the Wooly Thistle. And Maggie here is our product development manager and the co host of our little Shopcast here. It's Monday morning when we record this. You've been out on vacation the last week yeah. with, with your daughter, which is so nice. And um, yeah, we are just back at it here Monday morning. We've got lots and lots to talk about. Great products launching here, there and everywhere. And um, Maggie, tell us how your vacation was. It was good. It was really quiet. We did a bit of a staycation. We didn't go anywhere really yeah. and just hung out and spent lots of time together and yeah. we did puzzles and read books and ate bagels. Oh, <laughs> delicious. And are you feeling rested? I am. I'm feeling really rested. It was really, really good. It was nice to just, it was a little disorienting this morning being like, oh, my slow roll can't quite be this slow. I need to like <laughs> move it. <laughs> You're not a morning person? I mean, I am if I can just sort of my watch and take my time, but yeah. uh, but I don't wake up early uh, yeah. on my own. Yeah. The, the, uh, my cats help. Yes, I bet. Um, yeah, really loud in the morning. Yeah. But, uh, so even last week, I was up out of bed most days by seven thirty. Oh, not um, bad. Cause so I cats. was just I was awake, and the cats, and even on the days when my husband fed the cats, yeah. um, I just was still awake. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm so been, used to getting up. Yeah. And it was light. And yeah. So. Yeah. And we had an eclipse last week. We did. Did you go and do? We did not go. Like, so we stayed home. I'm um, so here in town. We we saw like it was like 95. Yeah, it was as 90s. good as it was. Yeah, it was really close. I'm sure totality was amazing. <laughs> Um, but near totality is pretty good near too. Near totality, like <laughs> going out in my driveway, like we had been out um, earlier that morning and just the traffic on the highway headed north. Yes, true. I was like, I just can't. Yeah. Sunday, um, the Sunday before the eclipse, we had been in the car a lot that day. We went, so you took a day off. <laughs> so we did. So I was like, because I yeah. had asked Irene, like, if you really want to go, I will go, but we should be, you should be aware that it, it's going to take us so long to get Do home. you know, I think the highways um, passed us us were really chock-a-block and I mm -hmm. remember uh, I was in West Lebanon and I was driving through and there was a line like I've never seen for the electric car uh, yeah. stations like way out and I thought what is going on didn't think <laughs> didn't put you two together that it was for the took you a little bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've never seen that much demand and sure enough right. um all these cars were about to run out I yeah. like I think if I'd had it on my radar earlier it was not on my radar if I had and realized I, that we were going to be off. I would have just gotten a hotel yeah. and stayed a few days yeah. up north yeah. Where, yeah. where we wouldn't have had to. Have. Yeah. I was I was up in Whitesfield and um, uh, what's it called? Waterbury, Vermont on Sunday too. And it was a little busier. There were people yeah. around, but it was really nice. Those are nice little towns to just sort of mitch around and yeah. look in the shops and stuff. But anyway, so yeah, anyway. Yeah, so good. Glad was, to have you back. Good. Thank you. It's yeah. good to be back. It, nothing fell apart, which was good. You know, we, I, we, I knew it we trundled be. on without you yeah. knowing that you'd be back. It was fun. Uh, I caught my husband on Friday reading the email. <laughs> <laughs> I went, uh, you know, like I went around the corner and he was on the computer and he's reading and I see him scrolling the email and it's Murray Wallet. And I'm like, I'm like, are you reading the email? He's are you like, getting like me something? what you're doing. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's so fun. That so, is great. Oh, that's nice. He even, he even, because um, he uses an email that'll block things. Uh huh. And he, he said to me, it? well, he said to one day, like, all of a sudden I'm not getting the Wooly Thistle email anymore. And I'm like, you have to click something. Uh -huh. I'm like, especially the email you use, like, is blocking stuff. So occasionally, just click a link. I'm like, to okay. get through to the website, and then that'll let there you go. The email know that there's you, your you little to tip it, so today. There's your tip. Um, and he's like, it's back. I'm like, yay! <laughs> and he's reading it. That's and even better. Oh, yeah. what a good hobby. Yeah, he's a <laughs> he certainly is. So Maggie, we do have some news in housekeeping that I think everyone will be interested we in. We do. We have reduced our shipping. Yes. Um. So uh, you now get free shipping on every order over ninety nine dollars. Yes. Which is amazing. Used to be a lot higher, so now it's only ninety nine dollars. Yes. So and the other big news is that um, all other orders under ninety nine dollars have a flat rate fee of four ninety five. In the U S. In the U S. Yes. In the U S. So sorry. Four ninety five though is amazing. But, yes. That 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 is really quite um, a slashing of shipping. Yes. Yes. 
And we're doing it in response to our customers. You know, we've, we've heard from some of you and thank you so much. You're such good friends to the Woolly Thistle when you email us and tell us what's bothering you or, or what, you know, what you're seeing out there. And it was very, very helpful and gave us lots of thought and we tried to slice and dice it so that we could do the best we can and you are getting the absolute best that we can do which is 4.95 us shipping uh it used to be at uh, 9 10 11 dollars uh so that is quite a big savings it yeah. will still cost us a little bit to do that it's not like it's free to us but it makes you happy and we want you happy and so that is what we're doing so we're very excited about that that is now available so if you're shopping today you will get those um free shipping on 99 or just 495 yeah. on everything else yeah. so thank you because what we were hearing from customers is that the shipping cost was a bit, bit of a barrier so we're hoping by lightening or lowering any kind of barrier that it makes it easier for yes. you to come and get the yarn that you're looking for yes 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 we really appreciate you shopping with us we know that other bigger stores out there can do free shipping and that's always difficult for us um to see that but you know we just we don't we're not able to so we are doing the absolute best we can and we've already heard from many of you in email you i know, got some dms did you when the announcement went yeah. out i got some dms yeah. um, on uh, instagram it was fun jill and customer service got a lot of emails saying thank you for this so we know that we've we've done the right thing so thank you for shopping with us mm -hmm. uh, that's very exciting that's our that was our big housekeeping news yeah that's huge yeah yeah it's a big change it's been shipping has been the way it has been for quite a couple of years at least so it was time for a change and um maggie what do we have going on today um we have segments uh from emma mm -hmm. i haven't seen emma's segment yet it's not quite made its way through to me yet but i have seen kelsey's and she's talking about travel knitting which i think is fantastic that will yes. be exciting yeah and we have yoga with kim this time and she is doing something a little different she's warming us up with some 80s style aerobics <laughs> low impact though thank you kim and then we do some full body stretches which nice. is just oh, so good so yes Excellent. lots to look forward to in this episode what else do we have going on maggie oh should we announce a winner we should so right. every episode we announced two winners mm -hmm. um and today the first winner is um martha geyer martha says Hi, martha. thank you both for all you do for us it was so good seeing your socks and your whips seeing marie wallen and her collection got me more excited about the aaron book and yarn. oh my gosh it is so good i know yes. can't wait for the release it's out uh <laughs> thanks again um so martha you have won a 25 dollars gift card to Hooray! the woolly thistle please email us at info at the woolly thistle put prize winner in all caps and we will get you that gift card yes indeed so if you'd like to be in the running for a free uh 25 dollars gift card to the woolly thistle all you need to do is leave us a comment below and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel that way Way more people get to see it which helps us out and you are in the the running for a free gift we pick them at random and we pick two usually every episode so go on leave a comment just anything you like so maggie do you want to tell us about your lovely shawl that you're wearing sure so i am wearing um this is made out of hand spun oh um, wow so this is the it's a Stephen is it West the dotted shawl. rays thank you yes, <laughs> it is the dotted rays shawl by Stephen west beautiful um i spun a bunch of singles and so it's singles That's yarn good. i don't often spin singles yarns but it was really nice it's lovely it was really fast you don't have to ply anything yeah um, and, and it came out maybe a fingering weight do you think yeah, yeah. fingering sport pretty pretty yeah. So yeah, dotted so, rays what a great shawl was it that a fun a really knit? great it was a really fun knit because you start here Ooh, the yellow <laughs> that yellow sun yeah uh is is the the start and you work these really short rows uh -huh. and, and then um, it does that lovely and then it does that yeah so very nice it was very potato chippy right somebody was asking <laughs> what potato chippy means and if you don't know it just means you can't stop at one yeah. <laughs> you have to keep going keep going one yeah. more just one more just one more row yeah when you're when your knitting's potato chippy you're yeah. on to a good roll yeah. um and of course, shawls right now, we are in the middle of our shawl cal. Not quite the middle of it, but we're in, yeah, we're we're in a couple like of three weeks. A weekend? A couple well, of weeks? Well, by the time, yeah. yeah, so maybe three, four weeks now. And um, it's lovely seeing all the different shawls that are being knitted. And um, I hope that you're enjoying your knitting. I have mine with me. Well, what are you wearing? Oh, today I'm wearing the... Um, the what am I wearing? The Victory? <laughs> the Victory, the Victory <laughs> Cardigan. 
<laughs> I'm like, it's a very Monday here. I know, super Monday. So I know, and you're seeing this on Friday, but yes, this is my. It's funny, I almost wore my Woolly Thistle t shirt today, too. Did you? Yeah. yeah. So this is what was clean. <laughs> this is, I don't know if we have these in the shop anymore, but this is uh, one of our uh, Woolly Thistle t shirts. Yeah. And yeah, my victory, and I'm wearing it. It, there's uh, we sell these in the shop or if you buy the kit because there's a kit mm -hmm. for this and there's even a course but if you buy the kit you get the buttons yeah. uh, as part of the kit and this is a really lovely uh, I love this cardigan it's warm and fluffy it's knitted in Rama Vams and I don't think it's too pilly at all it is woolen spun which will have some pills that work out but I think I've worn this enough yeah. yeah, you see a little bit there, but I think I've worn this enough that it's mostly uh, anything has worked out. But doesn't it look good? <laughs> I think it, it does. looks good. It's wearing really well. I wear it, it all the time. It fits great. It fits. Well, that was the whole point. You know, there's bust shaping, there's waist shaping. Um, it's uh, the measurement you take is your high bust, so right up under your arms so that your shoulders fit really well. Um, and I love this sweater. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've knit this quite a lot um, when I was developing the pattern. And I need more cardigans in my life is what I was realizing this morning, you know, so that I can just take them on and off. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I want more cardigans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what I'm wearing. But are you... Well, what are you show? I want to see your oh, shawl. Oh, my shawl. So yes, I should be wearing a shawl. Um, this is my hap shawl here by Gudrun Johnston. But I am also knitting on another Hansel hap. This is my Zinnia uh, that Maggie named for the colors. <laughs> Because yes, very zinnia. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going slow on this because I keep I keep running out of yarn. So oh. this has been languishing since last year. This is knitted in Jameson and Smith, two ply. And it's been languishing since last year that I can't find anything uh, oh. of the yarn. So I brought it to work today to show everyone and to get some more yarn so gotcha. I can keep going. I don't even know what color so this is. when you started this, you didn't have a kit then. You just, nope, this you just was, kind of went stash diving. Yes, this was stash diving. And, um, and I love these colors. This is 202 off a cone, which is great. And... Yeah, these are just some nice warm colors. So I can't wait to get um, to get the color work done so that I can get onto the applied edge, which I really enjoy knitting the applied edge. Yeah. It'll take forever because this is the full Hansel hat. This is the full yeah, that's square. Yeah, looks like a... Is it, it, and that's the large size too, Yes, right? it's the I only knit large things, it would seem. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. I think there's yarn in here. I just felt some. Yeah. So, oh, that's the color that the I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> that that's is the whole time. Awesome. It's like a massive shower cap at this stage, so you can hide all kinds of stuff. You should really dig in there, make sure there's not more. <laughs> that is too funny. Um, I had, I do have an FO as well. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So the other thing I am super, super, super enjoying knitting right now is socks. My sock mojo is just really. I know. High. I'm I'm really enjoying socks right now. Yes, me too. So um, mm. I showed you I was knitting on these last time, and they are now finished. Gorgeous. Right? Gorgeous. All right, so here we go. Let me see. Let you reveal. Ta da! Woo! I love these. They're I love these. Really beautiful. So the gray is um, uh, John Arbin Exmoor sock. It was just some leftovers. And then all these are colors from the Rambler. Uh, our own yarn, which um, I have lots of leftovers of. Um, somebody asked if I was doing the jogless. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not. So it's just, you know, I just started with the next <clears throat> color. I tried to keep the attention good. Yeah. Um, and it's not too bad. It's really not. I'm really lazy. I just couldn't be bothered figuring out how to do the jogless. And which is a crazy thing to say, given that. Um, but I think sometimes, so I think it depends. Like if I'm in the mode where I'm like, ooh, I'm, I'm ready to learn that new technique, then I'm yeah. all in and I'll pull up a video. Yeah. And that's but these great. are just scrappy socks that <clears throat> I was really enjoying. But sometimes I'm just enjoying the knitting. But I tell you why. It's funny because I was like, ugh, you know, when I get to the heel, it sort of stops the flow. And last time we were talking, you're like, I love the heel. So I took Maggie's um, <laughs> energy and I love the heel too. Yeah. And what, I, what I've been doing on, on my socks lately is I've been starting the heel flat with three stitches. I like that of garter stitch mm -hmm. yes and then i go into the what do you call that what's that called um you know the, the slip one knit one yeah um you know just the regular uh slip stitch on the heel but you get you get this nice 
little garter ridge, which is very, very helpful when you're picking up stitches. Look how, yeah, yeah. Look at my, look at my stitches that I picked up. They're gorgeous. <laughs> and uh, what I loved about this not being self-striping is that I could manage, uh, you know, the pattern around here. Right. Yeah, without things going crazy. Right. So I have two. And I am super, super stoked and excited. Awesome. I will be knitting lots more. They're gorgeous. Thank you. And I've been wearing, in fact, I think I have them on. Yeah, I've got on Virginia's oh, yeah. If You Go Out socks, which I knitted in Rambler. And uh, it's a very scientific experiment, but they're, they're, they are hardy. Yeah. I, they're I mean, in my boots. I think we don't talk enough about, so uh, there's 80% Dorset wool in there. And Dorset yes. wool is a medium grade wool, which is why it's not going to feel buttery soft. However, right. it's perfect for socks. It resists, resists felting. Yep. Um, and it does, it just wears better. So it wears hardy. It, yeah. It wears hardy. So being in a three ply sock yarn gives it additional strength on top of a wool that's already got additional strength it's, so it is a great sock yarn for a hundred percent wool yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it is it is it is a great sock yarn yeah. and uh, and the additional romney and corydale both had strength yeah on top of adding that heather it's a very it's good really sock wonderful. yarn and um i am proving it to myself as i wear these socks over and over yeah. and over and the other thing is that i'm not washing them all the time i wear socks endlessly without washing them in between because well my feet don't smell but second of all uh wool wool socks will repel smelly sock syndrome um all of that so it's not like you wear it and wash it wear it and wash it at least i don't i wear 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 wear, wear. <laughs> yeah i wear i wear them a bunch they do get washed but it's not till they after, do get, it's not till after multiple wear. Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to say too. Like I do wash them and when I wash them I put them in the washing machine usually. Although they usually are they're oftentimes super washed, which I feel right. okay about. So with my non super wash socks, uh, I'll probably will hand soak them in some yeah. water. I tend to even my super wash socks, I have a really big like rubber tub that I got like at the feed store. Yeah. Um and I put a I fill that with cool water, put a little bit of eucalyn in it and just dump all the socks in and I walk away. Yep. Well, that's um, it. And then I come back a few hours later and I toss it into the washer and do the spin only. Yep. That's... And then hang them to dry. Yep. It really can't be easier. Yeah. I don't block them again or anything. No. They just hang. Yeah. <laughs> it's very easy. I did block Virginia's socks. The yep. If you go out socks the first time. Well, to yeah. To really open up the lace. I did and too. And let the, the and um, it's, and stitches it's... settle. Exactly. But then after that, I don't yeah, bother. Yeah, after that, I just kind of wash them. Yeah, so I'm very happy with my socks, right. and um, I need to find my next pair to be knitting, although I did cast on straight away another Rambler set, which I didn't Great. bring, but they're just, they're just constantly, you know, round and round and mm -hmm. round. I love that. I forgot yeah. how much I enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. this year, this whole year of sock knitting has been, has really gotten my sock mojo going. Mm. I, it's not feeling stressful at all. No. I'm just really enjoying Me sock too. knitting. So I am working on my April socks. Oh, I let's don't have think a I showed last time. So I did make a, um, can I have one of the blockers? Yes. Right. So I don't think I showed those. Did I bring both of the finished ones last time? I think oh, I forgot them. Can I, do you want to show them? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think I'd shown one before. They're beautiful um, and very soft. Garthenor, right? Yes. Um, so they're Garthenor Snowdonia. Um, Which? And the contrast color is a little bit of Rambler. Yes. Um, shall I show this later? Yeah, sure. Um, we're going to show it now. So our restock of Snowdonia has arrived. It's gorgeous. Here's some more really Snowdonia beautiful. socks. So <laughs> go ahead and show your socks. So I knit these. Um, I knit them on a size one. Um, I went up a needle size for the um, color, work. color work. And they do. They fit really well. It was just a nice little bit to... Yeah. I just pulled it out of the it's stitch dictionary. so lovely. Um, yeah. So I haven't worn them yet. Somebody asked me about how warm they are. I will let you know. I will report back. I wanted to show them nice and clean before I started wearing them on my feet. I will start wearing them. I will tell you they are fluffy feeling. They and do. They feel really nice. Like the yarn when you're knitting with it pe feels pretty fine. But, yeah. But it, it does. together. And it doesn't bloom a whole lot, but it does. It feels substantial. It feels I think wooly. it's going to feel warm. Yeah, yeah. I think it will. They do. Lovely wool socks. So here is are the colors that we have this is a marl here called idris makes me think of idris elba mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's not bad handsome handsome wouldn't mind seeing him in a pair of socks <laughs> <laughs> and uh garthador's uh let's see which one's this ogwen it's a nice blue 
and they're dyed on the gray so they've got a nice depth of color i think this is fig which is a nice juicy purple yeah and whoop, burn it burn it not sure how would you pronounce that burn it burn it american american <laughs> Markin. rowan which is a lovely green mm -hmm. and then two grays the lighter of two is Tomen or two men Tommen. Tommen. yep and tegan tegan so so yeah lovely sock yarn and even lovelier once knitted up here's a pair yes. of socks that we have these are the kia socks mm-hmm by Don Henderson, I think. By Don Henderson, okay. Yeah, Which my sister nice... knit that sample for us. Thank you, Marie. Yeah, yeah a nice baskety weave kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so happy to have this out. I have seen this selling in the shop. Yeah, it's so you, great. You're finding it, which is great. Yeah, they are 50 grams gain, so depending on the size socks you're making, you may need one or two. Yeah, you probably need two. Probably need two, More than depending likely. on how, how big your feet are. Or oh, right. the recipient well, but, uh, but can you get a whole pair of socks, even for small women's size, out of 150? I wouldn't recommend that I as a strategy. I, you, you may be playing, depending on, because there's a lot of factors, right? It depends how long you want your the leg to be. like so. Yeah, if I, yes, you want to do it toe up, I think, if you're doing, if you're really risking not right. having enough. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I mean, you have small feet and you can do it in 50. I have small feet. I could Although probably... I also have that color work bit on there. Exactly. So I have, so you did I that have, with I one did, skein. I did manage to knit my pair with one skein. It was pretty close. I do have a second skein. I bought two skeins. Yeah. Because um, you're just so not that I'm crazy. Gonna, <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm just going to I don't want to advocate crazy. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Because you never know. And um, there's no guarantee that you'll get the same dye lot. It's just yes. a whole. Yes. It's a whole thing. Whole and thing. though you can use your leftovers right. to make stripey things or do other color work. So it's not a waste. Right. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Let's have, let's see this so gorgeous for, thing. So for April, um, I decided to, I went with the WYS spring colorway. Yes. Um, I was feeling like knitting more socks for my son. Yes. Um, Perfect. Which caused a lovely discussion about like, wait, wait, he's getting more socks. <laughs> um, from the daughter, I'm like, how's my, how's that sweater I knit you? Are you wearing it? <laughs> and that silenced her. But um, <laughs> so his first sock is done. Um, I finished it. I love it. I think today is what, the 15th? So yeah. well within um, my... Yeah. Yes, halfway my through two, the month. My two weeks and I'm looky making, look. making good progress on sock number two already. It's so it's such um, a juicy, lovely, bright, limey green, isn't it? It really is. Perfect great for young springy men. green, especially like here in New Hampshire. Ugh. Things are starting to poke up, but it is very much brown. I Stick still season. have I still have snow at my house too. Oh, yeah, just, yeah. Just go stomp on it. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, go <laughs> kick it. Spring rage. Um so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Um, it's just a nice... And self-striping. So it's West Yorkshire Spinners. So it's West Yorkshire Spinners and the spring colorway. Signature four ply. So we yeah. also just got the DK in, though, which I think we showed last yeah. time. Yeah, and I did buy... So I, I bought... I did a little sock yarn shopping, um, and I bought the rock and roll colorway. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice. So <laughs> probably for my son. Um, <laughs> my husband was like, more socks for Sam? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you probably want some too, huh? Um, and then I bought some Drover. I couldn't resist the Drover. Oh, yes. So um, yes. I got a couple skeins. And yes. I'll probably do some striping or yeah. something fun with that. Yeah, good, so. good, good, good. So that's good. So well, lovely. My, my April socks are on track. Fantastic. Yeah, and I would say that my April socks are on track too, but they're just very scrappy at the moment. And uh, yeah. th this is not a um, well thought through or hosted or anything. This is very casual. Yeah. Actually, um, as a result of um, the community wanting to do it, and we're just sort of tagging along with you guys yeah. and uh, thoroughly enjoying it though. Because, you know, I, I very much am a garment knitter and um, I love knitting my clothes. And I got away from socks. Um, yeah. And I definitely need new socks. I mean, you know, the socks I have are all hand knitted, but they are getting holy after many, many years of rotation. So right. I have been thinking that I need new socks, but did, didn't get around to it until now with this. And now I've knit, I've knit a few pairs of socks already. So 
yeah this year yeah yeah it's, love it it's, it's so join a, in if you want to there's absolutely no it's very loosey-goosey yeah. um uh, there's conversation about the ravelry group and the facebook group yeah and um yeah just pop in join and in. share and you know if you don't get a pair down a month so what? that's okay it's still you're progress. still you still have more socks than you would have had Even you not if you done it take all year to finish one pair of socks you finished a pair of socks right? <laughs> that's right that's right and so, then you get to wear them yeah it's all good do you have any whips i do have a whip so i have been working on my shawl oh it's um, coming along it is coming along um it is the minky shawl by um kate davies and i'm knitting it with the pink is some british breeds marie wall and british breeds four, four fly, fly and the heritage daughter of a shepherd heritage is the brown gorgeous um, and gorgeous yeah so the, very special I've gotten to the point where um the, Cause you can kind of, I don't know if you can see if I open it up. Lots so of you can see, Yeah. So it's these oh, little diamonds. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. And so you can really see the pattern. So I actually took out my stitch markers cause they were driving me bananas. Right. Um, because Wait, one you, of them, yarn you have to move one for a double decrease. Yeah. And I actually found like, once I got far enough in where I'm like, you know, you what, know like, what I doing. see the pattern now. Yeah. Um, and it's easy to see what I, if I've gone off track. Is so, there is there an applied border or anything, or is this the actual? I don't think so. I okay. think it just goes. So Which it's is... from her book Davar. Yep. Um, oh, it's lovely. And, oh, yeah. So I love that's it. the gorgeous. So kind of see how it'll finish up there. Very nice. It's a really pretty. Very nice. A really pretty shawl. So it is. It's lovely. I'm enjoying working on it. Does it? Is it one size? Did you choose a size or is um, it no? It's just one I size. Guess you so can there, just is keep a, going. there is a there is in the book. She's got a smaller minky shawl that's more stripy. Let's see right there. Oh, it's like a little. That you can see it's more like kerchief size, yeah. and this she stripes it differently. Yeah. Um, I know I like my shawls bigger, so I just went with that one. We and like I big figure, shawls. I figure I will. The goal is to really use up. Yes, keep going with it. that. Mm, um, gorgeous. So, it smells really good too. Yeah. I have to keep the cats away from that one. That was instant that they saw that one and they were like, oh. Yeah, well, when I'm knitting on this mahas mahusive thing, um, the cat, she has to, and actually. She tried to get in it? Well, no, she, does, she hasn't figured that out, but she certainly sits on it. And yeah. um, I cannot wear yarn sweaters around her anymore. Her claws, I mean, oh. she sits here and her claws are just always getting stuck. And I'm like, you're ruining all my knits. So yeah. I think when I get home, I have to change out and put on a cat wear the old sweater. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, maybe I'll just sacrifice one old sweater that I've knitted for the cat. Um, but yeah, yeah, love the cats, love them. <laughs> Do you um, love them? But yes, I yes. It will test your patience. Yes, and your knitting. Yes. So well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's all my knitting. Yeah. Um, that's all my knitting right now too. I am knitting on a sweater, <laughs> but it's it's off and secret and just you know coming along as it. Yeah. As it does. I have picked up the sleeves on the sweater that you gave me. Oh, good. Um, yeah, yeah. You should so definitely show that. That was a that. couple episodes ago where Corrine went, ran through all her whips. Mm -hmm. um, and one was a languishing whip of a sweater that she'd cast on the uh, Hohi Locatelli pattern. Yeah. Um, and it's a lovely pattern, <clears throat> but I don't know what I was thinking. It will never fit me. Yeah. So it will fit you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm like, all I got to do is sleeves. So I'm about, it's only getting sporadic attention, yeah. um, but it's a nice repetitive pattern. I was able to just pick it up. Yeah. I just went with, I'm like, all right, I'm going to assume she used the needles. In yeah, the, I think I'm like, did. Well, so I'm just going for it. I'm yeah. going to assume my attention is going to be perfect with yours. <laughs> and actually so far it looks really good. Oh, so fantastic. Hopefully, hopefully for the next episode, I'll have a sleeve done and I'll bring do you it know, and show you. Do you know what's lovely about that is that you're going to finish it. I love that and you'll wear it, but that sweater or cardigan uh, was my travel knitting during my epic month-long trip to Scotland with my kids. Aww. So it's been on trains, planes, uh, ferries, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I was knitting it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Nice. So there's a lot of a lot of good time in there. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So you need to bring it in and show us when when you yeah. start to. Yeah. It's nice because it it's knit with tuku. It's gorgeous. And yeah. I haven't knit. I've knit a pair of mittens with the fingering. It's really before. nice, isn't it? It's really mm -hmm. nice yarn. Yeah. Um, I'm so. so glad you're gonna finish it and have yeah, yeah. it and uh, enjoy it. That's good. Yeah. I had an itch to cast on a sweater, and I'm like, <clears> you know what? I'm just gonna do the sleeves. There you go. And get that done there before you, I fast allow sweater myself. Knitting. <laughs> fast sweater knitting. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. So what else do we have? We well, should go to a segment. Oh my gosh. 
we were we're terrible. Half an hour I in know. here. Let's let's go. Um, let's go to Kelsey, who is talking about travel knitting, which is super interesting, especially as we come into the summer and mm -hmm. some of you might be going places. So we'll see you on the other side. Hey, it's Kelsey. I'm jumping in here um, to talk a little bit about knitting and what I'm working on and what I'm planning for. Um, it's gonna, it's a little bit different than something sometimes that I normally talk about, uh, but it's it's kind of the same in other ways. Um, first of all, I just I'm not wearing knitting because I'm wearing my Eclipse sweatshirt. It has cows wearing Eclipse glasses, and it feels like a very Vermonty thing for me. Um, we live in the path of totality. Um, from the recent solar eclipse, so it was awesome. I love my purple, my purple cow sweatshirt, and I just wanted to explain that I'm not wearing knitting, and but that's the reason why, because it's very timely, and very comfortable. Um, I am actually leaving on a trip, on a on a flight, on a flying, on a flying trip. That just shows you how long it's been since I've flown anywhere. I actually haven't flown anywhere since the beginning of the pandemic, so I am I am excited about this. I'm flying for work um, for a few days. Uh, just in the U.S., but but it'll be uh, a nice a nice thing to kind of get out of my comfort zone and get back into traveling a little bit. Um, but I'm not here to talk about traveling. I'm here to talk about knitting. So what I'm talking about is how to plan or how I plan for my travel knitting. Um, in a lot of ways, it's not too different from how I have my normal projects that I'm working on. Often at home, I will have a larger project, a sweater, a blanket, something similar that is usually too big to go anywhere. Often it has some simpler sections or it's all simpler sections, like maybe the sweater has a lot of stockinette or maybe the um, blanket is complicated, but it's only, you can only have to work one piece at a time or it's only in one color or something like that. So it's bigger, it takes a longer amount of time, but it's not that, um, it's not so bad. Bad? Different, hard, complicated, brain using. Whew. I would often ha at home have a, that bigger project. I often also have a small project that I can take, put it in a bag if I'm going riding in a car, if I'm going to an office, if I'm going to you know, wait somewhere for something or if I might have a few minutes in between things, something like that. That is often for me a pair of socks. Um, so I have this sock sized project bag um, that I use for that. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. I often also have kind of a middle project that is middle in complexity and or size. So something like a hat, a cowl, mittens, um, something in there that maybe is more interesting, more, you know, different stitches, color work, cables, lace, something like that in between the other two. Um, so if, say, I'm in a complete ocean of stockinette in a sweater, and I'm sick of doing that, because occasionally you do get sick of doing all stockinette, um, I can start, I can work for an hour or a night or whatever I'm doing on that other project. So I often, at home, will have three things happening. Um, it's a little cumbersome for travel to have three things happening at the same time, especially if you're not planning to you know, be sitting on a rocky shore line <laughs> knitting for days and days. But right at this minute, my larger pattern or my larger project is actually a garment pattern that is a tank. Um, so this is the Venlo pattern um, by Mika John. It's a tank, um, V-neck sort of tank top. It has a tuck stitch detail here. Um, and it's actually knit in four panels. So the front the back and those two sides are actually knit all separately, which is really a good thing for travel knitting. Because if you're knitting, say, a sweater that is in, top down, seamless in the round, you're always carrying the whole sweater with you. Um, so at the very beginning, you only have a little bit of sweater, but like you might have a lot of yarn. But at the, by the end, you have a lot of sweater. And even if you're only knitting a sleeve or something, you're carrying the whole sweater. Here, I've knit the front and I'm about two thirds of the way through the back. I can leave the front at home because um, there's no way that I'm going to finish the back and the side panels and decide to seam it all while I'm gone. So tip number one is seamed garments that you're knitting in pieces are actually really good for traveling because you can take smaller pieces. That's also, if you're not a garment knitter, that's also true for blankets. A lot of blankets are knit, like Tin Can Knits has some blankets that are knit a lot of people do that are knit in squares 
I know Lindsay Fowler has a blanket like that where you're knitting anywhere from like a four inch square to a 12 inch square, but you're only knitting that square. Then you put it away, then you knit another square. That's the same with granny square um, blankets with crochet. You're often doing either um, five kind of layers of, cro of the granny square or, or more or less or whatever. So there could be three by three up to six by six or whatever it might be. So you're only doing pieces and something that's seamed later, you can travel with those little pieces a lot easier. So that's my first tip about travel knitting. The second is um, having something, and this applies to when you're at home too, but it works well for me when I'm traveling, having something that you, it won't be a problem if you lose where you are. So a reasonably simple but fairly engaging sock pattern is great because if you aren't going to lose your space in a chart, if you're not gonna lose where you are in lace or cables or something like that, if you just have to put it down, like you know, you're on the plane and the drink service comes around or you're in the airport and they call your boarding group or you're waiting for a taxi and then they show up or whatever it is, there's all these in-between times that are nice to have, you know, five, eight, 10 minutes worth of knitting to do, but then also you might need to put it away really fast. So that's what I'm, I've put in here in my sock bag. I've put two of the 50 gram, I'm gonna get the label, two 50 gram skeins of John Arbin Exmoor Sock. I think this is their old label because I've had this for a few years, but it is a made in the UK worsted spun sock yarn. It's only 10% nylon and everything else is British breeds of wool. Um, Exmoor Blueface, Corydale, and Zwartbles, or Zwartbles, I've heard both. This color is called Hemel, H-E-M-E-L. It's kind of a dusty blue forest green color, if that makes sense. It's not teal. It reminds me of like blue spruce tree green, if that's helpful. Um, so I have, I'm very optimistic, I have both um, 50 gram skeins of that. You could also just travel with one, depending on how long you're traveling for. Um, because in 50 gram skeins, it's already split for you. You know this is one sock, this is one sock. Um, so you could leave one at home if you're, if you're thinking, I'm not gonna have enough time to finish a whole sock. You don't need the other one. Um, so that's another way to cut down how much yarn you have to carry with you. Maybe you don't need to bring the whole 100 gram ball, you could bring just 50, either if it comes in 50s or you can split a 100 gram ball into two 50s before you go. So I have to decide what I'm gonna do with that. Um, I am also, I this is my little, my sock bag, I just keep in it two pairs of, did I do this right? Yeah, two pairs of chow goo, they're technically interchangeables, but I'd never interchange them. Um, a US one and a US one and a half. For most sock patterns for my knitting tension, that will do ribbing and regular sock foot. Um, I knit everything magic loop, including heels, even you know heel flaps or whatever. I do it all on these long um, cables. So that's all I need. I don't need DPNs. I don't need other sizes of, of needles. Um, and these are just on these little mini cords, so they really fold up, kind of messy, but really well, like that. Just get thrown into this, into this bag. So that's the other thing. I've never had trouble with metal needles on planes, but as I mentioned before, I haven't flown for a while. So I'm hoping this will still be fine. Um, but risk for carrying a couple of needles, so I will have two sock related needles and one needle for that other, for the other, for the top, the Venlo top project, I will not have my full case with me. Um, limits what you can do kind of on the fly, but I think I'm planning enough for it. So I'd rather not risk losing that whole thing if the security people decide that, you know, I can't bring the whole thing. I only have a few needles that potentially, and I've heard generally in the US, you don't have any problem with this, but we'll see how it goes. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out is the pattern that I'm using is what I said before. Interesting, but not so complicated that um, you lose where you are or you can't figure out where you are. I am reasonably good at reading my knitting and I think a lot of you probably are as well, but something like a complex lace pattern or something that changes a lot through the sock, you may end up when you're sort of knitting a few and then putting it down, you may be mid-row or you may be, you know, 
am I on row seven or row 12? Cause they're the same and I can't tell where it's what's before it. Um, the sock I am knitting is called Dear Bjorn. It looks like that, if you can see it at all. It's kind of a dark color for that picture. But it's a slip, mostly a slip stitch pattern on the sock. So it has some texture, it has some interest, but it is not super complex. It's something that I've, my understanding is I've never knit these before. My understanding is, is pretty um, memorizable, kind of, you can kind of figure out the chart, or it's not a chart, the instructions in your brain and kind of keep that there. It's in 52 weeks of socks. It says socks under there. It's the the first volume. Um, it, it now comes in hard, uh, hard, I think it only, maybe only comes in paperback now, but that's what I'm doing. So the third space travel tip, space saving travel tip that I have for, for knitting is don't bring this book. <laughs> it feels fairly obvious, but especially in these 52 weeks books, they make their patterns really succinct. Um, not to say they don't add in for have enough information. Um, you have to be pretty familiar with abbreviations. They have a whole glossary in the front of the book, but it really helps to be familiar with the abbreviations. But this, for example, is really two pages of instructions. So instead of bringing this whole book, I'm going to take pictures on my phone and you can do this on a tablet, you can do this on your computer, or you can do this um, just photocopy and print it out. Just taking those two pages with me because I don't need anything else. I don't need the rest of the book. I like the feel of having a book, but I don't need that on a plane. Um, also, I am a six foot tall person, so I need as very little stuff in my space on a plane as possible because I take up most of the space on, in an airplane seat. Um, so those are my three big things about packing for knitting uh, while you're traveling. One, if you wanna knit a garment, pick one that's in pieces because then you can take just one piece of it. Um, two, if you're knitting socks, bring one sock worth 50 grams of your sock yarn because it takes a good amount of knitting to get through a sock and if you're bringing two projects you're probably going to be working on the other one as well so unless you're going for a long time and you're going for a knitting retreat um just being realistic about am i going to get even get to the second sock could keep could save you a bunch of space in your um, luggage and then the third is don't bring the whole book <laughs> take a picture make a photocopy um do whatever you got to do to bring the information that you need with you uh, without bringing the whole thing. And I guess my, I guess I have four things. Only bring the needles you need. It's really tempting to be like, oh, what if I decide that I need to go up in my gauge or if I decide that I need to go down again for my ribbing or I need to change something? Don't do that. Bring as few needles as possible. It reduces your risk of losing anything um, when you're flying if security decides to confiscate it. Um, and it reduces the weight and it reduces sort of what you need to be carrying with you. So those are the things I'm thinking about. Those are what I'm trying to decide, make sure that I have what I need and what I want to bring. Um, I am still thinking about if I want to bring one of those middle patterns, that's a an, um, maybe mid-level complexity, something interesting but smaller with me. I probably won't, but we'll see. I'm, I tend to overpack with knitting, so I, it's kind of funny that I am have this video. But that's what I've been thinking about, and so that's what I wanted to share with you. I also have one little clip about the uh, Marie Wallen's Erin weight yarn that is in the shop now. It is new to the Woolly Thistle and to the world of yarn. So um, just describing my knitting experience with it and the few swatches that I've knit uh, right now. Dun, dun, dun. British Breeds Erin weight. Marie Wallen is producing an Erin weight yarn. So this is the four ply. Regular Marie Wall and four ply and the balls like that. Ba boom! Erin weight. So the Erin weight is it's the same blend of wools. It's a still made at um, John Arvin, as far as I know. So it's a worsted spun, 
yarn. It's still these fantastic heathered colors, which are the same as, and I don't have the exact matches with me, but like here's the three balls I have. These are all colors from the four ply range. This is Mulberry, Russet, and Blossom. So they are um, heathered colors, if you can see. They go really well together, um, but just knit up at a, at a thicker gauge. They are, I think, this is gonna be confusing again, but I think this is actually structurally, structurally a four ply. Um, so it's a rounder yarn, and I will be writing up a blog post about this, but it's a rounder yarn than the four ply, which is, which is actually a two ply structure. So four ply is the weight, two ply is the structure. Aaron is the weight, four ply is the structure. I, I had a previous video, a couple videos ago about that kind of breakdown, but that's that. Um, I, what I, the other thing I wanted to say, it is 93 yards to 50 grams. So that's in the 186 to 100 grams range. So it's a good Aaron weight. It's a pretty, it's a pretty um, decent Aaron weight. She recommends stocking stitch at 19 stitches on a US seven. Um, and I've knit some swatches. So this is, this is a swatch on an eight and that's on a six. And I have the actual numbers in the blog post that I'm going to um, get together. But I believe this was 19 or 20 and this was about 16. I'll have to double check. Doo -doo -doo. So that's really nice. I also knit in color work. So again, just like her original, it looks, looks really nice in color work. The colors work well together. Oh, I should say these are unblocked swatches because I just didn't get that to that before this video. But here are the unblocked swatches. So they curl and they're not, they're just totally filled out. But if you love her original fingering weight yarn and you love doing color work with it, but you think hmm, maybe I would want something thicker sometimes, like maybe a thicker hat or a quicker knitting sweater, this is a real, a real option for that. The last thing I wanted to show you, which is a little bit off of what normally you get with Marie Wallen is, dun, 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 brioche. This is a two color brioche in the russet and the mulberry. And it's a really nice and squishy brioche as well. So um, just wanted to show that quickly. Well, thank you, Kelsey. I hope everybody enjoyed your segment. I'm sure they did. Mm -hmm. And we still have Emma to come and uh, knitting yoga, which is awesome. Full body knitting yoga this week. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> so Maggie, what, what do we need to talk about now? Should we share this is this is the Hansel Hap here by Gudrun Johnston and this here is all about the French, mm -hmm. which is by uh, Carolyn Holbrook. She sent us this sample, which mm -hmm. was nice. It's so knitted great. in tuku fingering fingering weight. It's a lovely garter stitch, very nice and mm -hmm. potato chippy. Yes. Yes. All right. So the big news in product launches, I would say, is Marie Wallen's yeah. yarn, which is. Um, Sorry, that's okay. So Marie has launched her brand new yarn, Aran, which is a worsted weight, not to be confused with Aran weight. Um, in, in the UK, I think this weight is called Aran weight. Yeah. So this is her British Breeds Aran weight, which is a worsted weight. And these are the first 12 colors that she is releasing. These are similar or actually the same as the uh, colors that she launched her British Breeds four ply with. Um, and this is like getting two balls of British Breeds four ply spun together. It's exactly that. So this is a 50 gram weight and it's two balls of the four ply spun together. Her yarns always smell uh, so good. Yes, they do. Um, so you can see, it's yes. just a beautiful. It's a wooly, wooly yarn. It's nice gorgeous. Round. Yes, beautifully round for cables, which oh, her new so collection. Pretty. So with the yarn, she has put out a new collection of 12 designs. Um, some of them are single colors with lots of texture, lots of cables. There's a couple that I really want to knit. And then um, there are nine, I believe, nine uh, designs that are color work. Mm -hmm. And so the kits for those will be going on sale on Friday the 26th of uh, April. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you're on our email list because that's where you'll find out about dates and times. Um, but the yarn itself is now available along with her book, which we'll put a picture of here by the same name. It's called Aaron. And the designs are so pretty. 
and beautiful. They look really pretty. They also look really wearable. Yeah. Um, yeah. They just, they look really, really nice. Yeah. And what's nice is you're knitting a Marie Wallen piece in half the time because the yarn <laughs> is thicker. Yes. So, you know, if you've ever felt um, overwhelmed with her designs, um, this would be a good way to go. I think yeah. it's really, really amazing. So shall we just go through and show everyone sure. the different colors? So what do you have so there? So this one is raw. This is the undyed. Yep. Uh, there is, is this one undyed? This is silver birch, which is the gray. And here we've got pale oak, which is a lovely soft uh, beigey brown. Um, mulberry, I think this one is, yes. Lovely deep sort of eggplant purple. But you can see there's reds and blues in there to make it the purple. Mm -hmm. This is gorgeous. Uh, this is russet. And this is eau de Nile, which is a lovely icy blue. Really pretty, very popular. This is Blossom, mm, pink, my fave. And here we've got Mallard. Just wanna check, I'm... It looks like Mallard. Yeah, Mallard, mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a nice blue on gray. How are you doing there? I'm, 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 I'm holding on. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is Wood, which is a nice medium brown, dyed. Chestnut here, it's a reddish brown. It's a uh, foxy kind of. I don't know that I can. Okay, <laughs> here. Why don't you pop them <laughs> oh, back in there? Oh, that's good. And then we have here dark apple, which is a lovely green, a little bit darker, I think, than what it's showing. And then quince, another of my favorite colors. This sort of peachy apricot, lovely color. So um, they're we are putting together kits so those will be ready for sale on friday april 26th which is a week today i believe and um but you're free to purchase uh yarns by the ball so long as we have them in stock because we know that her yarn sells mm -hmm. really fast and and thank you everyone who did come out now last weekend um thank you for ordering um hopefully the free shipping and the 4.95 shipping helped with your purchasing decisions and the book is actually on pre-order as we record this because it's not on its way to us yet there was a little delay with the printer uh, which is fine so we will get that out to you you know what we're like we get things out as soon as possible even you know when there is a delay to us yeah. we turn it around really fast so you'll have it as soon as possible and uh, that's very exciting the book is, itself is gorgeous it was photographed in Northumbria which is a lovely very atmospheric area of um, of England right on the coast there I believe there's lots of sort of you know ancient kings and you know Alfred and all that kind of stuff ancient history there so you sat down and had an interview with yes. Mary Wallen so if you haven't yet seen our our most recent episode right before this one go back yeah um and you can watch that interview yeah she morning. was she was great she shows you all the pieces and talks about uh, the inspiration for them as well as their construction so it's a fascinating um episode uh, or you know interview um because we're endlessly fascinating in every episode right <laughs> so but yeah it's a great it's a great chit chat with her and I love it when she comes on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so nice of her to join us. It is. So that's our big woohoo. But there's loads of other things going on in the shop too. Yeah. Um, the newest book from Lina is here. And if you ordered it, you should have that by now. It's Anna Johanna's Strands of Joy, book two. Mm -hmm. And I think we might still have some in stock. Yeah. Um, and I think Lina's coming out with issue 21 any minute too. I'm not sure when oh, that's okay. going on sale, yeah. but it's coming real soon. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it really the smell is, of your books. I it is really nice. It really is. Um, that's very pretty. It is. Oh, here. I can yeah. show you. It's a cardigan. Yep. Just really saying I need more cardigans. I know. Thank you, Anna Johanna. Beautiful. wonderful. Yeah, lovely so, charts. Like that's that. so pretty. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of really nice designs in this book. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a keeper. Um, and... Uh, good quality. Very nice Always quality. Always good quality for yeah. Lina. Yeah. Um, what do we have? Jagger. So we've restocked the Jagger BFL, um, which is just a really nice natural. This is doing so well. We had to get more. It's just really, really nice. It's good. Mm -hmm. um, just gorgeous. It smells good. It's mm -hmm. so, so soft. Like if you're looking, if you're new to the woolly thistle and you're scared of our yarns being a little too scratchy for your take, taste, uh, this would be a great one. This is 100% Blueface Lester, which is breed specific and a soft 
as yeah. kittens. Yeah. It's a really great intro to non-super wash wool. Yes. Yes. It really is. Their heathers is also, I think, really approachable. It is too. Um, in That's softness. right. Yeah. That's right. So, and then we also have some new colors. We we have been stocking their Gotland, and mm -hmm. they added some new colors. So we've got them in for you too. Now Gotland is a drapey yarn. It's got a long staple, yeah. long glossy curls really on the sheep. So this is a really great yarn for what might be like shawls Sh shawls i think it would make great hats you can make it would make a great sweater it would give you a little bit of durability in yeah that. Um, yes it would so this <clears throat> color here is spruce and it's a lovely sort of bluey green you know that spruce color mm -hmm. uh, another green here grasshopper and this is very soft too isn't it yeah gorgeous that one has like lovely yellowy undertones and it's a 50 50 yeah, gotland blend it. It says 50% undyed Gotland wool and 50% top dyed wool. Yeah. So Jagger is a worsted spun uh, mill. And so they use top, which is a whole thing. And so they've mixed some top with the Gotland. So the Gotland in here is undyed, which is giving it that lovely heathered look. Yeah, Ooh, I like beautiful. this. This is gold dust. Really good kind of yellow yeah. on gray. I think if you were going to do color work, that for me, that yellow would be a wonderful like pop. color pop. Yeah. And this is another one. Um, oh. Campfire. I really like that color. Isn't that something? Really nice. It's sort of soft too. It's mellow but mm -hmm. bright. Yeah. Um, brick. I think, is this one of their new ones too? I think it is. I think so. I think we brick could. might actually be one of the original colors. We're not we're not sure because they all go together so well. They really do. Really nice sort of reddish color and then the blues we've got here true blue which yes. That's a true blue. And then we've got a breezy blue. Which is a lovely bluey gray mm -hmm. or gray blue. This here is North Atlantic which I think is a well Green named blue, yeah yeah do you yeah. want to hold up all the blues next to each other yes. that might be helpful right. here we go so these are the blues this one is the breezy blue true blue down below and then the um ocean blue or yeah what's it called north atlantic north atlantic really nice together mm -hmm. and last well not almost last is the purple haze which is a nice purpley color and then just the natural, uh, sorry, Gotland Storm Cloud. This is the natural gray that everything is dyed on. Lovely. Yeah, really nice. So we have those in. These are all brand new. What a lovely bouquet. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you go. Just, and these are 50 gram skeins, mm -hmm. I think. I believe so. Do you know what? They don't look like Oh, yeah, 50 gram. Yeah. 166. Yards. yards and their sport weight sport weight sport weight which is nice right very versatile yeah with what you can knit in that weight i think that would make a really pretty that alpine bloom hat has been really really popular yeah i think this would make a slightly woolier looking Ooh, so like nice. to have that little halo from the gauntlet and it might have a little like if it's tall it might have a little um little slouch a it. little slouch yeah mm -hmm. that would be nice yeah so we love jagger spun yarns don't we yes very much there we go our neighbors there in maine yeah nice and local to us mm -hmm. a great business old family farm you're really supporting um a, a wonderful historic um business there when you are shopping for jagger mm -hmm. what else do we have going on well, i think we should go to emma and of then course. we can talk about there's a new kit from emma available in the yes shop. all right hi everyone my name is emma and i'm coming to you from baltimore maryland as i do about once a month uh, and I'm here today to talk about all things Bear Isle. So I have a new design that just got released um, exclusively through the Woolly Thistle in a kit form. And it is called the Natalie Cowl. Um, and the Natalie Cowl, um, we can put a picture here so you can see what it looks like when it's done. This is a picture of my grandma wearing it, whose name is Natalie. I named it after her. Um, but this is the version that, um, that I uh, have knitted as my second sample um, for me because my favorite color is teal. And this is knitted in Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. Um, my first sample was knitted in a combination of Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight and jumper uh, Shetland Spender by Jamesons. Um, and the colors are all um, like laid out in the pattern if you want to recreate my exact grain colorways scheme. But this one's all two ply jumper weight. Um, and the kits from the Woolly Thistle are available 
uh, like I said, in monochrome colors, all in two ply jumper weight. Um, so you can totally mix and match your favorite colors to get something kind of wacky. Um, you'll need one ball of four of the colors and then two balls of the other four colors um, because some of these colors have uh, more rounds than others. And so some you need two balls and some you just need one. Um, but yeah, uh, the pattern will be available exclusively through the Woolly Thistle for one month and then you can get it on Ravelry. So if you're, if you've got yarn already and you just want to, um, you know, do your thing, that's fine. You can wait or you can get a kit. Um, yeah, so this starts with a provisional cast on and you knit a lot. This is the labor of love. It's like knitting about five Fair Isle hats, <laughs> um, in terms of the amount of knitting. And uh, the actually, I feel like the biggest labor of love is weaving in all the ends. So you can do that uh, as you go. Sometimes when I knit something like this, after every big band, I just weave in all the ends for that band. And then it's like nothing at the end. But this one I didn't. And it took me uh, a couple of episodes of television <laughs> to weave them all in. It wasn't too bad. Um, you can also just tie them and cut them or not even cut them because none of the ends will be visible because this is a, just a tube that gets sealed. So when you're done knitting it, you go back to the provisional cast on edge, you, well, you block it first, ideally. So this hasn't been blocked yet. Um, and you put a stitch marker halfway across the provisional cast on round. And you put your stitches back on the needle starting there at the halfway point. Because then when you graft it to your um, live stitches at this end, which are currently on a barber cord, because these will also be back on needles at that point, um, you're giving it a half twist. You can give it a full twist if you like, but I tend to give it a half twist because one time I thought I was making a full twist and I thought that I put the twist into the fabric before I grafted it. And when I finished Kitchener stitching all 130 something of the stitches together, it didn't have a twist in it. And I was like, well, I'm not gonna unpick that. That took two hours. So <laughs> um, you can Kitchener stitch this together or you can three needle bind off or you can sew it together however you like to graft live stitches. Um, that's up to you. But uh, Kitchener stitch is seamless and the way that I wrote the pattern, it won't even add an extra round. So um, I usually do that, although it does take a long time. So you'll have to be patient with that. Um, but yeah, it's usually because I'm like done the whole like knitting process, I'm able to be patient for the Kitchener just because um, like I'm so excited that it's done. <laughs> um, so I will actually be um, providing a tutorial, a short one, just a video tutorial on like how to make sure that you're setting it up correctly because it's a little confusing when you like have this piece and you're trying to graft live stitches and all of that. So I will be just a short little video to make sure that you're setting it up correctly. Um, and yeah, so this is the Natalie Cowell. And again, it goes around the neck once, named after my grandma, Natalie. Um, and again, there's a twist in it. So, yeah. Yep, you, so you can get Jameson and Smith to play jumper weight as well as Shetland. Um, spin drift from Jameson's of Shetland at the Woolly Thistle to make your own colorway if you like. Again, it will tell you how many balls of each color you need in the pattern. Um, but yeah, this is a fun piece. If you are looking for like, you're really into Fair Isle, but you don't want to knit something too big in the summer when it's kind of warm and you don't want like a huge thing in your lap all the time, um, like a sweater. And um, I'm a bad example of this because I am almost always knitting a big Fair Isle sweater every summer, um, which I will also be doing this summer. Uh, you will see all sorts of progress on that once it gets going. I do have all the yarn now and I've decided on my colors for my Rhinebeck sweater this year. Uh, and it was kind of inspired actually by this colorway, but it's uh, much brighter. <laughs> and there's like sort of greener teals instead of the bluer teals, uh, more like turquoise on this maybe. Um, but yeah, so this is fun. And I, uh, you know, if you wanna try Fair Isle, this is a nice place to kind of start if you've made like maybe a hat. If you're looking to get into Fair Isle because you wanna make something like this, but you're not really quite confident yet, I recommend buying the course on the Flowers of Fort Rose hat through the Woolly Thistle. Actually, I taught that course, not that I'm biased, um, but you can buy a course to learn how to do color work and start with maybe a hat. Um, but I really like this piece because it's essentially, I mean, I don't want to say it's gaugeless, every, all knitting has a gauge, but like, because it goes around your neck, um, you can just kind of knit it as long as you need to. Uh, because you can just keep going if it's not if your vertical gauge is too tight but like it's a hor your horizontal gauge is just gonna mean like how 
how tall is it this way? Um, and so in theory, unless you're really sensitive and you really don't want it to be too long, this should fit most people. I love, I love knitting with like gently shifting fair isle colors and I love this. Um, you can also add a pop, like in the middle is here. I would, I mean, I don't want to use the word condone because you should do whatever you want. I made this sample and the green sample, but like I wrote the pattern so that you can go do what you want with it. And I hope that you have fun with whatever colors you decide to use, whether we've kitted it up for you or whether or not you just like do whatever you think is best. And I'm sure it will be gorgeous. Um, so yeah, this is my, this is my new design, the Natalie cowl and look for a short tutorial on how to seam it. Um, if you are confused. Um, and then I also wanted to show that I, like many of you, I'm knitting a pair of socks every month this year. Uh, and sometimes I find it hard to limit myself to one pair of socks and I've done a good job. I have finished every pair of socks within the month, my February socks, which are the pink ones hanging right there. Um, I literally finished them on the last day of February because they were a complicated lace pattern that was taking up a lot of space in my brain. Um, and then the March ones are these purple ones here with the mohair stripes. And this is my April pair. So, um, I was totally inspired. Uh, by Maggie's little fair aisle motif at the top of her socks last month. I thought that was really cute. I was like too scared to do color work on socks before this because I tried it once on a pair of Andrea Mowry socks and they were way too tight. Um, probably because I didn't go up a needle size or I could have cast on more stitches. They just literally didn't fit over my foot. Um, and so I was just kind of like wary about that. So I was like, all right, let's just use sport weight yarn. This is like from Kelborn Woolens, I think, in Philadelphia, this yarn. Um, it's like a sport weight sock yarn with mohair in it. Um, but, uh, and then, and then I just had a, like a, a gray and a similar weight, but it was wool and spun um, for the color work. So I did not do the heels or toes in that color. But um, if I do another um, sample of this sock, I will make the little color work here as well as the heel and the toe all in the contrast color. These are my own design by the way. Um, I like to design socks based on people from books. So right now I'm working on a little women series and these are named after Beth. Beth March. These are going to be the Beth March socks. Um, these pink ones I haven't decided on yet on the name um, but these purple ones are uh, are going to be named after Joe March. So I've got two more marches to go. I already have a vision for the Amy March socks. Um, the Meg March socks, I haven't, um, I haven't planned those yet. <laughs> but if you, uh, yeah, if you like books, um, comment on the character I should design for next. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I'm excited um, about making more of those samples someday, but not this year because you know what? One pair a month and they all have to be different. That's my rule. Um, so, but I am, I used to make a lot of socks that were like really complicated lace and texture patterns and that was really fun. But also I'm really enjoying the like vanilla vibes of something like this, which is the color work. Color work to me, as you can probably tell, is very like calming and it's not complicated. Like it's something that my brain just kind of locks in for and goes and it doesn't feel vanilla, but it, it goes pretty quickly and I find it very addicting. Um, so this was just a little band of color work and then the um and then the rest of it was vanilla and it was sport weight so it went extra fast um but uh yeah for those purple ones up there for instance those um i just i they are a vanilla sock i just threw some mohair stripes in them and i like held mohair for the heel and the toe and i thought that was just really satisfying like it was just making me think enough that I really wanted to get through that stripe section quickly because it looked really good and it was fun. And then the rest of it just kind of flew. Um, so yeah. Um, and adding the mohair in sections made it feel like I could kind of knit it in these chunks that were like going towards the next section and it made me kind of have this forward momentum. So I thought that was really fun and I've just really been enjoying like the simplicity of vanilla-ish socks. And I think that might be kind of more of a theme of this year. <laughs> it's just like simplicity. Um, yeah, so that's it for this month. I will talk to you again soon. If you want more content, you can follow me on Instagram at Barnaby underscore knits or on YouTube. My show is called Tiny Desk Knitting and I do this for about an hour most weeks. Um, so I'll see you around and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. So thank you, Emma, for your lovely segment. And...
I'm sure we're sure that you're talking about the Natalie Cowell in there. And if you're not, then that's fine. Uh, we're <laughs> going to talk about the Natalie Cowell. So Maggie, yes. Yeah. So the Natalie Cowell is named after Emma's grandma and Emma has put together four colorways for us and we have kits available for you today. Yep. Um, this is the blues. Which is um, lovely. That Emma selected for that blue colorway. Yeah. Um, and, and then the original green colorway. This one is so gorgeous. And um, this is two <laughs> because I didn't follow any instructions and I, I picked them all up together and promptly got confused. So there's, they're going, irresistible. there's going to be a pink and a purple one out of these colors. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful, but I'm not confident in what I've done to know which is what. <laughs> Which yeah. is so me. So, um, but it will be sorted out in the yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah. You'll get, um, they'll all be listed in the shop so that you know exactly what colors yes. you're going to get. And we promise to double check before we ship. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Yeah, so there's pink, purple, green, and blue choices, which yeah. is just lovely. Yeah. And yeah. And so, all put together by Emma. Yes. She she selected all the colors, all in Jameson and Smith 2 ply. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's going to be lovely. So, yes. yes. really wonderful. Yes. So you can get that now and this kit will come with pattern. Yes, which is really nice. My hat is up here. Oh. Um, we're slowly, slowly inching our way towards releasing kits for that. I have named it. It's called the Balahulish, um, I, I nearly said fairy. It's named after the Balahulish fairy, which is a ferry that doesn't run anymore. There's a bridge there now in Scotland. Um, and it's a place that uh, makes me think of my dad a lot. So this is the Balahulish beanie. And uh, yeah, at least it's got a name now. Yeah, do you want to take one down and show the... Yeah. So this is a sample that Caitlin knitted in uh, Spindrift. Mm -hmm. And it's really pretty. So we'll have pretty. kits for these. And then uh, this one, I haven't sewn in my ends. I'm so <laughs> naughty. Uh, this is in Jameson and Smith. And these, these colors are really, I think, juicy berry kind mm -hmm. of lovely colors and then of course you know pinks and oranges and warm colors that's my jam that's this one and uh, yeah so the Bella Hulish beanie very comfortable I like the way the top sort of has um I don't know a lot of puckering I guess yeah. uh bringing it all together and the color work pattern goes right up there and uh yeah this is a color work motif that um I came up with adding in you can see the little keys sort of key crossed keys type thing there's a flower there's this kind of flower and then it all goes together up there in this little puckered top so oh, yeah this feels very soft Caitlin did a lovely mm -hmm. job um yeah so we will have kits eventually when we get there um and hopefully that uh, you will enjoy that yes. so, yeah Bella yeah. Hulish Beanie great yes um, and then we do have, do you want to show the stitch markers? Yes. So for Mother's Day, which is coming up faster than, than we realize, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a lovely little um, promotion where when you spend $125, you will get this lovely set in a golden tin <laughs> of stitch markers. And to commemorate spring, we have these lovely little, oh my goodness, I'm all tangled up here. These are cute little yeah, stitch markers really with different color charms. They're little tulips or tulips, as I would say. Well, really pretty. Oh. Yeah, so they're different colors and they make a nice little set. Thank and that you. will be yours for free when you spend $125 in the shop. Really, really cute. We'll tell you how to go about that uh, when Ooh, they... A little blue one when we uh, put them in the shop. Yes. Yes. So yeah, So get on our email list and we will let you know as soon as this special offer is available to you. And you know, Mother's Day, we, we love to wish mothers a happy Mother's Day. And of course we mean all mothers of all, of all stripes. I'm myself, I'm an adoptive mother and um, you know, we love to think of all mothers, birth mothers and all who mother. So anyone who mothers is eligible for Mother's Day. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of Mother's Day, uh, New Hampshire Sheep Mobile. It's always right. Mother's Day weekend. That's right. So, so we better be looking out for that. I haven't seen yeah, anything yet. I have. It's, they've started shouting on Instagram. Okay. So it is still Mother's Day weekend. Okay. So yeah. 
I think you and I were planning. We on... usually do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, so. and I think somebody might be joining us this Who? year. Emma? <laughs> no, I think Kelsey actually might be joining us. I'm so excited. So, That's so. great. It would be great to have Kelsey with us. I hope she can make it. And anyone yeah. else who wants to join us, we'd love to see you there. So yeah. it's always a scorching hot day at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. think there was one year where it was just really the, nice. But uh, then there was one year that we were just... Oh my gosh, it was Frizzled miserable. like fritters. Yeah, yeah, it was hot. Yeah. So hopefully, just calm it down, May. Calm it down. Yeah. All right. Do we have anything else? Uh, we are. We still have a few of our carry-all totes. We actually are back in production for more of those to come. Mm -hmm. These are gorgeous. I love mine. I'm using mine all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So thank you for shopping for those. Um, Maggie, what else? Is there anything else? Um, let's see. Did we mention we have a reduced shipping? <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, Let's see. Oh, second winner. We, if you've hung in there this long, all <laughs> right. The second winner for today of a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle is at Aline Mazuka 5118 Aline says, I have not knitted knitting Marie's design due to color work flat, but after watching this, I will do one of the sweaters that work in the round yes. color work. Yes. And the chance to try some new yarn. Thank yes. you. Thank you, You'll Aline. love it. Um, so you have just won a $25 gift card Hooray. to the Woolly Thistle. If you can email us at info at the Willie Thistle, put prize winner in all caps, we will get you your gift card. Yes, and if you'd like to be in the running next time, all you need to do is leave us a comment down below. Just say hello and uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And that's all you need to do. Uh, winners are picked at random before every show is aired or recorded so, and uh do we have some q a we or have, yeah if, if you if you don't mind sitting for a minute we have a question that's really directed at you and i think that this would be interesting okay um uh, uh this was written by someone named karen. Hi, karen uh karen says i've always loved woolly wools and have been knitting for years and years but my garments have always been outer wear so the so have only needed occasional washing. There the theory is that wool is naturally self-cleaning yep. um, and antibiotic, right? Yep. So once a year is enough for outer garments. But as you mentioned on last week's Shopcast, Karine, you wear woolly wools next to skin. Um, for example, your vanilla sweater. So my question is, what is your washing regime around those garments and how do you do it? <laughs> I don't well, literally do. your dirty laundry. Um, so she says, do you do a quick soak with some eucalyn as for as for more irregular washes or looking at how dirty shirt collars can get after a few wearing? I was thinking about this and worrying about how to care for woolen products worn next to skin that might need more frequent washing. Am oh. I overthinking this? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yes. Um, I, I would <clears throat> say maybe you are thinking about it more. And I think all of us come from... A point of view of living and wearing a lot of man-made fibers now is just you know as ubiquitous it's everywhere and those things will cling on to the smells that you give off and so you have to wash them and they're made to go in the washing machine and then disintegrate basically very quickly whereas uh, wool is uh, an amazing amazing natural fiber and so I will, if I'm wearing something really next to skin, and I say that all the time that I wear it next to skin, but what I'm maybe most often meeting is up near my neck because I don't have anything there. I don't mind that. It's not often that I don't have a t-shirt on underneath, but I do have a couple of sweaters that I do wear the whole thing next to skin. And um, no, I don't necessarily put them in the wash because I've worn them uh, up under my arms and things. Um, I will hang it outside on a, on a clothes hanger. And I'll just hang it outside for the afternoon. And um, I'm telling you, when you take that down, that thing smells brand new. So, or if it's winter time and there's lots of snow and it's a sunny day, you can lay them all out on the snow and between the brightness and uh, of the sun and just that um, those sun rays, that will clean them. You know, and we're just talking about, you know, I'm not talking about stains or you know right. hard grime but just you know wearing right. um that will do it and then in the summer um you know same thing i tend to wash all my knits in the summer and i do that in, in my bath uh usually i'll just fill the bath with water fill it up with as much knits that i can that still gets to slosh around a wee bit and um and i i sometimes i forget and leave it overnight i don't sweat it <laughs> next day i come back and um you know we'll wring it all out not like this, but you know, like this. Um, I lay tons of towels down, nice thicknesses of towels, and I'll wrap things up, roll them up, 
uh, in the towel and then step on them to squeeze out the water and then they get put outside on the deck to dry. That's it. Um, so, you know, maybe once, maybe twice a year, I do a, a full on wardrobe wash. As for, you know, if I've worn something and I feel like, you know, that really does need a wash, then I'll just, then I'll just soak it. Uh, I can use eucalyn, I can use a tiny bit of dish soap if I want. And I don't ever make it bubbly. Um, I pour the water in, which is usually um, on the, on the warmer side. I don't, t I, not hot, but on the warmer side, I tend to go with. That's not too shocking for the wool. Um, so I put the water in, let it settle down, and then I'll squirt some eucalyn or dish soap and just let that go down. I don't froth it up. Right. And then I put the, the wool in and uh, leave it to soak. And then when it comes out, it's, it's brand new. Yeah. The yeah. perk of the eucalyn is you don't have to rinse it. That's um, true. And it has lanolin in it, which will sort of revive and rejuvenate. Which is wool. lovely. Yes. Yeah. So really nice. I, I do generally use yeah. the eucalyn. I have I, tried a couple other things and I they're okay. Yeah. Um, I really like yeah. eucalyn generally. It's yeah. I think, I think it's a nice positive thing to add back to your to your knits but you don't need to um you can certainly just use water i mean i think water will do it without anything in it but eucalyn is lovely or a little tiny drop of dish so um if you're concerned that your knits are feeling too hairy or too rustic um people have suggested that you pour in some vinegar which will give you a vinegary smell i mean not strong but it will be I there i think it'll really smell in the water i haven't found it to last very long on the knit wear itself but that will soften <coughs> your knits as well that's an old one and um, yeah or i've also heard hair conditioner and hair conditioner but you like, would have to rinse that you would definitely want to rinse that, yeah but it should soften things up a bit yeah so there's all kinds of you know ways to deal with it i think the first thing though is mindset changing from this idea that oh i worn it i've got to wash it. it's like what i was saying about the socks i don't wash my socks every time i wear them there's absolutely no need for that at all so um and there's no need to wash your woolies um every time you wear it which yeah. is which is such it's so freeing and i feel like a yeah. lot of people are scared to actually knit garments because they're afraid that they're going to have to care yeah. for it. And, and it, it sounds wearing. like Karen is used to uh, washing outerwear That's minim true. minimally. Yeah. Um, so I think too, part of it is like know yourself, right? Like I, I've i learned over the past few years, I actually have pretty sweaty feet. <laughs> my feet, my <laughs> feet tend to get rather clammy and yeah. sweaty. And so I probably do wash my socks a bit more just knowing that. Like after a while, like I do air them out and I will yeah. wear them multiple times. Yeah. But I also am sort of like, you know, I'm just gonna give you yeah. a little freshen up well that's it but it's um, not like it's not like i wore them i have to wash them right it's you know so i think that mindset uh just sort of loosening up a little right. so i think part of it is knowing freeing. yourself if yeah. you know too like if i'm wearing a, a sweater and i have uh, an allergy issue that day and i sneezed a whole lot i'm probably gonna throw that True. sweater in the bath yeah um, but but that's what you do right you put it in the bath and you you just let it soak right. it's not like um there's nothing you know that you need to do no big process you right. just have to be careful with the fibers that you don't wring them out this way that will stretch them that you don't use water that's too too hot that might shock it and might cause it to shrink or what have you um so you know uh yeah it's easy yeah so it's i think easy. part of it is knowing what the wool knowing about the wool and then knowing also about yourself yeah 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 but yeah so yeah, that's what I do. Um, not a lot to it. Um, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about this just the other day with the warmer weather about to come that um, last summer I got sucked into an Instagram sponsored post uh, for a dress that was really cheap. It was really pretty. I thought, oh, that'll be nice. And I got myself it and I wore it probably one July day. Of course, it was made 100% polyester and, oh. you know, man-made stuff. And I was so hot. I couldn't, I, my body couldn't breathe in it's it. It's not breathable, yeah. And so I, what I realized is I typically wear cotton, linen, and wool now, and my body is so much more comfortable for yeah. it. And I really kicked myself for getting sucked into that purchase because yes, it was cheap, but I've never worn it. And when I did that once, it was so uncomfortable. So yeah. it is worth saving up or making your own clothes, I think, with, with really good quality materials yeah. as best as you can afford for yourself. It does make a difference. So. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Right. So I hope you enjoyed that little question. If you have a question for either of us or anybody on the show, um, just leave it in the comments yeah, below. Yeah, that would be will, great. We will work toward getting to it. That would be great. So I think now we just have to go and do some full body yoga yeah. with Kim, which I love. I hope you all enjoy that. Get up on, on your feet and start moving. Um, she, she assures us it's low impact, <clears throat> so don't worry 
too much about you know as always hurting do your what knees. you're able to do yes be careful yeah and um i think all that's left to say maggie is if you go out take your knitting bye Hi, Lily Thistlers. It's Kim here with Yoga for Knitters. Uh, you can find me here on the Willy Thistle, but you can also find me on Instagram, on Facebook, on Patreon, and of course on YouTube. So today's class is going to be a little bit different. I want to show you an all over body stretch, but the best way to stretch is to do it when you're warm. Getting out of bed in the morning it's really hard to touch your toes. But if you warm your body up first, then moving it and stretching it and getting into all those places that normally are feeling stiff is a lot easier. So today's class is in two parts. The first class, the first part of the class um, brings to mind those old 80s aerobics videos. We're gonna do a really nice, slow, low impact warm up to music. And then the second part of the class is all going to be stretching for the body, the whole body. So I hope you join along with me. Get your good running shoes on. Don't worry, there's no jumping unless you want to jump. And I will see you for a quick warm up. Okay, so before we get started with our little warm up, I thought I would show you the moves so that it all makes sense to you because it kind of flows together fairly quick. And I'm going to do a lot of sign language, but you might not know what you know, this means or this means. So I'll go through the moves with you real quick and then it'll all make sense. So the first move that we're gonna do is a march. So we're marching on the spot and we're gonna take it wide and narrow. Okay, that's pretty easy. The next move, I'm probably gonna do something like this and it means a side step. So you're stepping side to side and adding an arm. Okay, big arm movement. You can always do a smaller one if you want, you know, just like you're doing kind of a weird back crawl or a big movement. And then I'm gonna go like this too, which means one, two steps in each direction. Okay, so pretty easy so far, right? Am I bringing back memories of Jane Fonda? <laughs> okay, so the next one we're gonna do is, um, oh yeah, so I'm gonna go like this. And what that means is, yeah, you can see my feet, that's good. We're gonna bring the heel forward and draw the elbows back. You can get, you know, you can move with this or you can stay stationary. And the more you move, the more you work. And this one in particular is a good reminder that everything is abs all the time. You can really feel how your abs need to cinch in to keep you balanced while you move those heels in one direction or the other. Okay, and then the next one is, oh, the grapevine. So I'm gonna go like this again. We're gonna go one, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. Just crossing the leg behind you. You can bring this up in intensity if it feels good for you by bringing that leg up rather than tapping it down. Okay, so that's the first set of moves. The second set of moves is a V-step. So I'm gonna go, well, actually, I think I'll probably go like, like this or something like that. Yeah, V-step. So one, two, out, out, in, in. Oh, so back up so you can see me. Out, out, in, in. And then we just add a star arm like that. Bigger range of motion means we're gonna get our heart rate up a little faster. Then tap my leg, change legs, change directions. Right, makes sense. That's our V8, V, not V8, <laughs> but a V step. And then the next thing is a salsa. I'm gonna go out like this and you're just gonna step out in, step out in. Okay, that's the more intense version. This is a little easier, but if you wanna get your heart rate up, take it low. The bigger you have, more change of direction you have, the more like, more your heart rate's gonna get up. And then the last thing I do is, forward and back. So I'm pointing forward and back. So let's say you're going to start with your left leg. Doesn't matter which leg as long as you remember which one you started with. So left forward, step forward and back, and then right leg, step back to middle. Forward to middle, back to middle. Then turn, quarter turn, forward 
to middle, back to middle, quarter turn, forward to middle, back to middle, quarter turn. Okay, change sides. Now I'm starting with the opposite leg. And we will go around in a circle one more time. And that's it, those are the moves. So you can choose what level of intensity you do. You can add a little hop if you want, if that feels good. You can go low, you can take big arm movements, and you can move around in your space. So let's get started.
highs and lows, highs and lows. It's all the same. Highs and lows, highs and lows. Keep all your games. Highs and lows, highs and lows. We are warm. We are ready for a big body stretch. Thanks for dancing along with me. I love it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take our feet a little bit wider than hips distance. Inhale the arms up. Grab a hold of your right wrist and reach over to the left. So you're getting a nice side body stretch without collapsing forward. You can still out of the corner of your eye see the ceiling. And then grab the opposite elbow, sorry, wrist <laughs> and reach over to the right making sure you can still catch a glimpse of that ceiling. So we're moving laterally. And squeeze back up. Beautiful. Take the arms behind your back, interlace the fingers, reach the arms up, and let's take the left leg forward and hinge at the hips. So our right leg is carrying our weight. We're stretching through the back of the left leg, and you can pivot that la left foot Right and left, right and left, side to side. Good. Only do what feels good, nothing hurts. And then, ooh, round yourself up. We'll switch sides and we'll switch grip. So interlace your fingers the unfamiliar way. Lift the arms up as much as they'll go comfortably. Hinge forward the hip, the right leg's nice and straight. The toes are pulled back. And we're just rocking the foot side to side. <laughs> Makes a squeaky sound on the mat. Good, and then come on up, shake it out. Beautiful little balance now. So balancing on your left leg, bring your right foot back for a quad stretch. It's okay to hold onto the wall or <laughs> um, fall over, that's okay too. And you're pulling the heel back towards the hip, but more importantly, you're rolling the pelvis forward. And as you do that, with that little pelvic roll, you will feel a beautiful stretch coming through the hip flexor and the quad. <sighs> Switching sides, finding your grip, could be the back of a chair, whatever. Your balance is gonna be different every day. Some days I'm really good at this and other days I fall over all the time. How busy is your mind? How much sleep did you get? Are you remembering to breathe? All of those things factor in. <sighs> okay, awesome, awesome. Swing it out. And as you do, just take the feet a little wider. <sighs> and we're gonna come all the way down to a squat. <sighs> Beautiful. The elbows are inside the knees. Hands come together. And this might be enough of a stretch for your inner thighs, but if it isn't, we can take the hands down to the floor, rock forward, and put a little bit more weight into the elbows, just above the elbows with your thighs. And that'll encourage the inner thigh to open up a little more. <sighs> now this kind of stretch wouldn't be awesome to do if you were like sweating and out of breath, but we only warmed up for about five minutes. So that's just enough to create the warmth that we need to get a good stretch. I'm rocking side to side. That feels really nice on my inner thighs and I'm just getting a little bit more. So if that feels good to you or rocking forward and back a little bit, that's good too. Awesome, come on down onto the floor. Take the legs wide. We're gonna hinge forward and then walk ourselves over towards the right. Now, right now, I'm facing my right shin. So my left hand comes over and I get a bit of a stretch through my tricep and my lats on the left side. And then I'm gonna rotate, you're gonna rotate too. So that now your chest is facing me and your arm comes up. You can look right at the ceiling and notice whether or not your ceiling fan needs a good dusting. The stretch is happening through the side body. Beautiful. Up we come. Let's turn so that we're facing that left shin now. Fold forward. 
take the right hand across so that not only are we getting the hamstrings, but we're also getting through this left side body. And then roll everything forward and up. So now we're getting into the, the side of the torso. Beautiful. All right, you squeeze in your abs to bring your legs kind of like a mermaid here. We're gonna take, let's see. So we're, we're, all of our weight, all of my weight is on my left hip. It doesn't matter which hip you're on. We're gonna do both sides. But all of your weight is on one hip. You're gonna take your hands, clasp them together behind your back, reach them around so that they're on the inside of your torso. And then drop your ear. So we've got like a real banana curve going on from our ear all the way to our hip. <sighs> Breathe deep, this feels good. And nod yes, if that feels all right for your neck, a real gentle controlled nod. Ah, <sighs> beautiful. Squeeze in those abs, we'll switch around to the other side. Mermaid stance to begin with. Then bring the hands together, clasp the hands and bring them to the inside of your side body. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Like this is the inside of your side body. So we're just reaching the arms across the back a little bit and then add the neck, deepen the stretch, make yourself into a seated banana and nod yes, because this feels so good. Hmm, it's amazing how much better we can stretch when we're warm. And I guess that's the whole premise behind hot yoga, which I find uh, to be a form of torture. It's not my favorite, but it is effective. <laughs> it definitely has its place. Let's come on to our butts. And then you're going to place your hands and your feet on the floor. Hands are facing your torso and then lift up. You're lifting the hips up. You're squeezing the glutes, but you're stretching through the chest the neck, well, not really the neck, the chest and the front of the shoulders. Just hold for another two breaths. You really get that stretch going, plus we're engaging the core because everything is abs all the time. Perfect. Come on down. We're gonna stay like this, but bring the left leg, cross it over your right thigh, and then you can gently rock side to side and get into the outer hip. Perfect, let's switch. And that's easy after a warm up. If this was first thing in the morning and I just got out of bed, there's no way I could do this. I would be like, oh, me groaning. You know, like it just wouldn't happen. So that's why it's so important. Not important, but vital if you're gonna do this kind of deep stretching to have that warmth in your, in your muscles plus I think you probably would agree with me that having some music to move to really helps you move better. It's motivating. It makes you want to move. It makes you want to sweat. It makes you want to smile. Perfect. Okay, last one. We're going to take it down. Feet up. We're going to grab the soles of our feet. We're going to point them to the heaven, soles to heaven. Get it? Okay, and then pull the knees down alongside your rib cage, not on it, but beside it. Little happy baby here, also known as lonely person's back massage, also known as dead bug, also known as honey, I'm home. Ooh. And we just rock side to side because that feels so good. And now I think we're probably ready for our day. So if it feels okay to you, we're going to hug our knees in, rock back and forth a few times, another type of back massage, and make your way up, whoop, either to standing or seated. And there you go. That was a little bit more high energy that we, than what we normally do, but hopefully that speaks to most of you. And thank you so much for exercising with me today, for doing yoga in a totally different way, for having some fun with me, and I will see you next time. Namaste.